welcome back to the weekly Alteryx Challenges with me, Nick Bignall. We, um, you, this is where you can watch me fumble through uh, the weekly challenges, uh, which I highly recommend you have a go at yourself. Um, obviously, don't, if you're going to do it, do it now. Um, uh, don't watch the video, rest of the video. <laughs> uh, but uh, And then you can watch the video and see how you did against me. There are lots of uh, other solutions as well out there, so there isn't one solution that fits all. But I think uh, this should give you a you know a good indication of um, how easy or difficult it is to do these challenges. So this is an intermediate one. Uh, it is the date. It's around date time calculations. The use case, if I just increase it a bit, so you can see, uh, the use case is the a distribution center receives a package at the point of receipt. The package is scanned and a timestamp is captured for arrival time date. The company is trying to reduce the amount of time packages in the facility, and as a result, is trying to analyze how long packages remain at the facility. The objective is of the exercise is to calculate the delta between arrival date time and the new well, time now field. This field is the uh, creation of the exercise. Create a unique field for day, hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so I think we can do that. So let's um, let's have a look. So in here we have in our input we have the uh, registrant ID, which is a unique, well maybe not unique number, but a number, um, a timestamp between in and uh, the time now. So this is the time. This must be all of the packages that are in the facility right now, and the time right now is 8.24 on the 14th of July, 2014. So let's have a look. Um, so one thing I do want to check is what the data looks like. So let's have a look at the output first, though. So on the output, we've got the same three fields, and then we've got this day, hours, minutes, and seconds. So that should be good. And I'm just trying to work out how best to do this. So let's see, first of all, what the data looks like. So we can do that two ways. We can run it. And that will give us some information about it. We can have a look. <clears throat> that says that this is a date time field and this one is also a date time field um, and this one is a string that's fine so we'll go with the date time now I know in formulas there is some there are some date time type expressions so let's just create a column called if to start with and then have a look so date time if you look down here, is one of the options in the formulas that it will suggest. They actually got a date time diff. So let's start with that. Now, what do we want to put in there? Let's put in uh, the start time and the current time or time now. And the unit we want is, well, let's start with. Days. Okay, it seems to like that. So if we create that as a double, we want something a bit better than that. Integer. No, we don't want it as an integer because we might want fixed decimal, uh, 16 decimals. Might six decimals might be enough. Let's have a look. See what that gives us. The diff is minus four on this first one. So what do we have here? Four. Okay, so that's a good start, but it's got zero, 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 zero. So it's given us an exact, maybe it's not fixed decimal we want. So let's 
Let's try a double and see what that gives us. It's just given us the days. Okay, right, that's why it's like that. Okay, it's also given us minus. So I suspect, one, we've got these the wrong way around. So let's just uh, do that and then timestamp. That should give us it the right way around. I wonder if we can just do it days. I wonder if we can do it this way. Hours. Ooh. Seconds. Minutes, if we want. minutes and seconds. I think it'll like that. Seems to be okay. Let's run this. Okay, so what is that? Given as a null, it doesn't like that. Mm. That's interesting. So what do we do to so let's let's get rid of that. So we've got the days. How do we? Wonder if we have to then work out. Uh, can't work out like each individual one. Well, we we know that that's the days. So we can easily do that, right? So just call that days, and we've done that. Let's do that. So that gives us the days, and that will match the days here. So we don't want all of the hours. We want just the hours minus the whole days. What we can do is the days times by 24 and then take that minus this that seems a long way of doing it but maybe the way to do it so let's take this and we'll do because now we have a new we can add new column and we can call it hours so this is our days so we've already got that so let's just uh, give us some space. So if we do date time diff, um, um, and we do, actually we just copy that whole thing, and we do hours. Okay, so that will give us the number of hours. So let's just stick that in a bracket. The whole thing to, to help. I'll just write the whole thing in a bracket. Why does it not like it? Oh, it's because this this bit doesn't. Then work okay. Then we want to do minus and stick the next one in a bracket. Okay. Uh, times oh, times twenty four because that will give us the whole thing. And twenty one is the answer. So let's just make that a double and run that. Okay. Bingo, so we now have that in there. That's good. Okay, so if we then take this the next one, we take the next one and we want to this is different. So we want um seconds oh, uh yeah, seconds hours, minutes, minutes, so we want in there, and then we want hours, and we want there um, 60, because there are 60 minutes in an hour, and we, and we rename this to be minutes, and run. Okay, 4, 21, 16, and over here, 4, 21, 17. So I'm out for some reason. Ah, look, the time's slightly different. Time now is slightly different between the two, which is interesting, but that means that I'm right because it's one minute or something, one minute less than one minute different. Okay, good. So then we take it again and yeah, so we want seconds. So we then take the total in seconds and we then take the total in 
minutes and there are 60 seconds in a minute and we have our answer although ah oh, you know what I've done I've done it wrong uh, add column and I want to call this seconds I've just overwritten the minutes with the seconds that's not going to work is it there we go there you go so we have our answer now it doesn't match this because obviously the time now is different but we have the for we have the format so let's just stick a browse to uh, complete it and then we're done thanks very much for watching and we'll have a quick look at the solution okay so i've opened the solution and immediately struck well, there's a lot less uh, formula or tools particularly formulas we use four if we go back to there we've got one two three four um, they've used let's make this bigger uh, just the one but they've actually done it effectively they haven't done a well they've done a date time diff but then they've done it as the format seconds so the time diff they work out the second so they do this first, this, they create this time diff minutes um, and then they use that and they've, they've worked out, they've had to work out how many of each of them are in each day, which is interesting because um, that was that means you've had to do all this calculation up front. Well, with mine, you know, it's much simpler to work out minutes, how many minutes in an hour, how many seconds in a minute. Um, so that should be should be straightforward. Anyway, there you go. As I said, it's always a different ways of doing it in all tricks. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that and see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.